The investigative hearing enters day four. Proceedings have been stalled by the refusal of the MD of the NDDC and the Minister of Niger Delta to appear before the lawmakers. But now all parties were present. The first significant development of the day was that the chairman of the committee, Honorable Lubumi Tunjiojo, had because of the corruption allegations brought against him, excused himself from the proceedings so that his deputy could carry on. For the sake for Nigerians to know, I'm not on a mission of vengeance. I wish to humbly appeal to my colleagues to recuse me from presiding over this particular meeting. Given the events leading up to this moment, the acting managing director should have expected that he would be grilled mercilessly by the lawmakers. And that is what happened. He was asked to account for the sum of 1.5 billion naira for COVID-19 not captured in the 2019 budget, 641 million paid to Clairpoint Communications, and 536 million not budgeted paid for Save Lives campaign in the Niger Delta region. Yeah, that company, we want to know the company, and uh, is this 531 million equally budgeted for to save lives of Niger Delta people? That's another question for you. Save life campaign. 536 million naira. You paid it. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out this issue based on the report you give us to the committee. 641 to clear point communication, 536 to save life campaign. You tendered the budget of 2019. Yeah. I give the letter from That is not the budget. That's not the budget we signed. The budget we signed for you in 2019, you have it here. But it was perhaps the question from Representative Iduma Igariwe from Ebony State, which threw the acting managing director off balance and resulted in him collapsing before the lawmakers. Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date are not are not This disrupted the session and forced the lawmakers to go for a 30 minute break. The committee reconvened with Speaker Femi Mujabia Miller sitting in. He insists that the committee is on a fact finding mission to unravel illegal activities in the region. It's not an adversarial, nor is it even inquisitorial. It's just a Obviously, the acting MD of the NDDC was unable to continue, which meant it was the turn of the Minister of the Niger Delta to take the hot seat. He denied report that 40 billion naira was missing, as alleged by the Parliament, and forensic audit ongoing. The COVID contract was treated as an emergency, and we're relying on your law, section 42, subsection A and B. And then after we make the turn to the Bureau of Public Procurement. And then comes the issue of due process and certificate of no objection to be carried out on forensic audit. Do you ever influence or exercise the powers of the managing director of the commission in any way? Great, that you were a member of the NDDC and lost a contract to award to me. You said I'm not, I'm not aware. I'm telling may, you may, that. Bring up those names. What will you tell us now? The status of the audit, the forensic audit. Bearing in mind as a lawyer that you cannot put something on nothing because the, 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 the procurement ab initio is faulty and fraudulent. Recall that the chairman of the committee had been accused of awarding contracts in the budget, but the minister is clearing the air on the allegation. I was giving you an example of contract breaches. Honorable Minister, 
Yes. With this, are you are you telling the world you are before camera we are live? Are yes. you telling the world that you have not said and you have never said NDDC gave contract to Honorable Tuesday or join April 2019? Mr. Chairman. Honorable Mr. Pleach. Honorable Mr. Pleach. Let's answer this question. Which one? The contract for? For for April 2019. No, no, no. I don't, I don't, I, I said for his place. I don't think, I don't think the NDDC has given a contract directly to Honorable Ojo because before you can say that, you must be sure that that, that contract is given to his company. The committee ended the hearing with the submission of the petitioner, Kolowale Johnson. Nigerians now wait to see what will be contained in the report of the committee and what its recommendations will be.